Hello and welcome to the Ferret Business Podcast. I am your host, Yemi the Ferret, a.k.a. Yemi, a.k.a. DJ Yemi. And with me today on the podcast is a YouTube moderator for a lot of people like Mass Tech Gaming and other people that I can't remember right now. <laughs> um, he's also a professional dog trainer who has trained over a thousand dogs, if you can believe it. His name is Hellraiser, a.k.a. James and uh he's here on the podcast with me today so um hey how you doing welcome to the podcast i'm doing great yemi thank you for having me have you been having a good day so far it's been a great day it's been very calm and i've just been thinking about uh doing this podcast with you well hopefully it hasn't been keeping you up awake at night <laughs> no i but i have been very excited about it so where are you currently living i'm living near the dc area is that area nice? Because I've never really heard anything about the D.C. area in general. Well, yeah, I live in Montgomery County. It's a very, it's a very high-end uh, community. There are, all, there are a lot of dogs and a, a lot of big houses. I believe Montgomery County is uh, one of the top 10 uh, richest counties in the country. Wow, so are most of your clients higher class or is it all mixed? Well... I have a very competitive rate, so I don't charge more than most people. So it's very, you know, it's so it's kind of standard. Um, if you want to board your dog somewhere or you need dog training, it's kind of the same fees that go around. Now, I know it says on your website that you accept non-spayed females, but you don't accept non-neutered males. Why is that? Right. So the neutered males, um, they, it's not that they become aggressive with the other dogs as the other dogs become aggressive with them because of the smell, the hormones that are, that they're just exhorting and it ju it's just not safe. Um, it's just not safe. I can't even go to the, you know, I can't like, I can't go to the bathroom and without worrying that the dogs will get into a fight. How many dogs can you board at the same time then? I try to limit myself to around four, but when I have a bunch of regulars, then I, I can go up to like five or six dogs at a time. Then it gets really fun. And you do mixed. You do from like 15 pounds to 100? Any size. Any, any size. size. I mean, my my house is pretty small, so I try not to have those giant mastiffs and great yeah. things <laughs> because they just, they just don't fit in the house. What is your favorite breed of dog then? Uh, what breed do you most like? That's a very good question because uh, dogs overall, it's a lot of people think that breeds are something that's so set in stone, kind of like a, like a cell phone brand, you know? Yeah. And people love to do research about their favorite breeds and they go and get that particular breed. And every time they do, it's, a, it's the exact opposite kind of dog that they expected. And so that, with that said, it's more about the personality than the breed. But if I have to answer your question, it would have to be a pit mix. It would be a, like a pit lab mix or a, uh, I recently had a client who was probably one of the most gorgeous dogs I've ever seen in my life. And it was a pit bull whippet mix. A whip mix? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so it was like a super dog. <laughs> well, that's cool. That That's freaking awesome. So my dog is actually a Jack Russell Corky mix and... I was hoping that you had some tips on training because he's still not really listening to me when I say sit and stay and you know all that. Sure. So um, the way I've I've been working with so many dog trainers and I <clears throat> excuse me okay. I was able to learn all these different styles and techniques and all the all the schools of thought when it comes to dog training and it kind of bugged me a little bit because everybody tr wanted to do something different but they weren't really focusing on what was mostly important so i started i started thinking up techniques that were important and then i was like okay there's too much stuff so i i started to remove and i really enjoyed removing all the factors that people added to dog training and then i just kept removing and removing and removing until there's nothing until there's just like you and the dog you know you can't talk you can't eh, anything uh -huh. and then i realized what is left is the relationship so then at that point i realized that is the core so now we have to build from there so then we you know so that from from the relationship then you have to add integrity trust respect but also you have to be strict uh the dog's life is they're mo they're at their happiest when they're submissive when they're under you hmm. you know 
uh, a dog that is aggressive, he's not happy. He's stressed out. You know, an alpha male. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, not alpha male. Just alpha dogs. They tend to live less because of the stress that, that they go through oh, of carrying the response. Yeah, it's very it's it's very weird, but they're very happy just being these submissive dogs. So what you have to do is you have a Jack Russell Corgi mix. Okay, so you have a lot of energy, <laughs> and he's small and strong yeah. and smart. He's long too. He's very long. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, so you just have to be strict. Every rule that you implement, you must apply at all times. And every command that you say, you say it once. Then you enforce the command, and then you say "good boy." <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because people get stuck on saying like "sit, sit, 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 sit." Okay, at that point, you made like fifteen mistakes already if you say "sit" three times. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so you just have to be extremely strict and just say once, sit. And then you give it like two seconds for the, for the dog to actually start sitting down. If he doesn't, then you give him a correction, you like a poke or something, and you know, you say no, sit. And it, it has to be very simple, you know. A lot of problems with dog trainers is that they try to add so much, uh, so much stuff. Oh, now you have the clicker, now you have the treat, now you have this special leash. Like, no, you're supposed to drop all of it, you know. You have to be more realistic with the dog. Wow, okay, yeah, I'll definitely have to start implementing some of that. When he doesn't listen, I usually say the command over and over again, so that might be what my problem is. Yeah, a lot of a lot of my clients. The problem is that they're they're just really friendly with their dogs. You know, their dogs is it's just their buddies, and unfortunately, the dog doesn't see it that way. So through dog eyes, they would be like the alpha, and you would be the one under them, right? Right, and that's well, yeah, and that's never healthy. That's and that's when the dogs start growling at you. They start claiming the couch, claiming your bed, and you know those they'll like start marking around the house it's a bunch of little issues but once you get the leadership in all the gears fall in place you know oh now the dog is behaving better the dog's not pulling on the leash he's sitting down he's not running out the door he's not uh, uh you know he's not killing grandma you know everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> every, you know everything falls in place and it's just about that that leadership that relationship so you have a few videos of dogs on your youtube channel are there any dogs you've had or babysat, quote unquote, that you've enjoyed being with more than others? Oh, absolutely. There are, uh, and it's quite special. There's only about a dozen. And I've had, I mean, over the years, uh, I've dealt with over a thousand dogs. And there's just, um, there was only about a dozen dogs that, are, that truly capture your heart. Because of their level of engagement with you, um, they're more, they pay attention to you. They can read you better than other dogs. They're paying more attention. They're smarter. It's just, it's a, it's a diff you really get that relationship with some dogs. Uh, I have a lot of clients that are regular and I absolutely love them. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, um, it's been truly, truly, re truly rewarding when the owner comes to pick up the dog and the dog is as happy as can be. Yeah, that's great. So it also says you also accept lizards and other stuff like that, other animals like that. What's the craziest animal you've had? I would say cats. <laughs> 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 because cats are extremely unpredictable, but they do it out of, I don't know, it, seem, it seems like they do it out of spite. <laughs> cats are really a whole different ballpark, right? They don't, they don't usually want to be near you and pretty much just they want to be king. Uh, yes, don't approach the cat. <laughs> don't approach the cat yeah actually that's also the same thing with dogs um don't approach just let them come to you well that's that's sound advice i understand that and you never want to approach a dog because you never know how someone had trained them and speaking of people what's the worst experience you've had with a trainer or someone trying to train their dog with another trainer or with a client well, let's say with a client that Okay, well, well, the the issue is is that a lot of a lot of people they can't control their emotions when it comes to their pet, so they become completely irrational. So this I had this one client, um, she had an aggressive uh, miniature pincher. So he was a tiny little thing. Yeah. Uh, but he had a bite, you know, and he bit, bit several people, and it was pretty bad. But so then. 
when I went to go work with him, I, I told her, I was like, okay, we're going to implement a correction. So I only use two colors. I use the slip chain, which is also known as the choke chain. Mm -hmm. It's not really a choker. You know, that's, that's, that's just a bad name for it. It's a training collar. And the prone collar for dogs that are a little bit tougher. And that's it. That's all. Those are the only tools I use, that and a, and a leash. And so I told her that, okay, when this happens, I'm going to correct the dog, which is just a little tug on the leash, you know, just to let them know that they're not doing some right, but you're not supposed to apply pain. Mm -hmm. Pain doesn't teach. So just a little side here, shock collars. Are they a complete no-no for you? No, absolutely. No, they're okay. It's like I said, you know, a lot of people just want to add these things and add these categories. And it's not really about the tool. It's how you use it. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know because I know a lot of people think that the shock collar is the worst way to teach a dog. Well, see, but, that's the, but those are the people that bought the collar, had no professional instruction, and attempted to teach their dog with it without knowing how to use it. Mm, okay. Then you get this horrible reaction. You, you traumatize the dog because you're supposed to train the dog before, and then you add the, the shock collar afterwards. And using the shock collar, there are procedures. You have Every time you put it on, you have to dial it all the way down to zero and recalibrate it. Because every time that collar is in a different place, the dog is going to have a different uh, tolerance for that for that stimulation. Mm, okay. So a lot of these people that you know they're like, "Oh, this tool is bad. This tool is bad." No, it's not the tool. It's how you use it. Yeah, that can be said for a lot of things, actually. Yeah. So you've trained over a thousand dogs, and you are a dog whisperer. So. When did you first find out that you had this special gift for uh, with dogs? Uh, I got my inspiration watching the Dog Whisper, uh, Cesar <laughs> Milan, when okay. I was about what 21, 20 years old, I think. And I just I, I I liked the show, and I didn't really think much of it. But then I started watching it with my friends and stuff, and I noticed that I saw more of what he was doing than anybody else. So then I got a job at a at a little uh, dog daycare place and I started sharpening skills <laughs> <laughs> but it is something that it's uh, it is something that comes from from inside I haven't been able to teach it to anybody else it's something that you just it, I don't know it's a, something about a presence something about being dominant something about I don't know it's uh, it's something you I still can't put a finger on so it's just something natural that came about right right very organic are you a whisper with any other types of animals or is it just dogs? Well, see, now that I developed all, all this all this knowledge with dogs uh, and I, I just kept going more and more scientific on it, I realized that it's not even about the dog. It's about working with brain chemistry. Oh, okay. So, I mean, you know, um, it's like, you know, I can teach Chinese algebra to a chimp in <laughs> three days, but I need to have a way to relate to the material. Right. So it's just about, so actually I trained my hamster to jump on my hand when I put my hand inside of her cage. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that was really cool, but she was diabetic and she didn't live much longer. Oh, that's too bad. Very sad. Yeah, yeah, her name was Appa. I would love to train my crusty geckos to jump into my hand, but uh, they're a little skittish and they don't really like to come to you. You have to kind of put your hand in front of them and wait, and eventually they might come onto your uh, hand. I don't think you can train a gecko. Yeah, I don't think so either, but it would be nice uh, <laughs> if someone comes here and just be like, hey, uh, just put your hand out, here you go. You can train ferrets very well. Ferrets are incredibly smart. Oh yeah, well thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> ferrets are like, that family of ferrets is literally, I find it to be the coolest mammals, like even above canines, because they're just awesome. I've loved ferrets for a very long time, but I've never actually gotten one. Do you have any tips for me if I ever get one in the future? A ferret? Oh yeah. Uh yeah, get two. They always uh, they always need someone, and they they play a lot. Uh, they make a mess in your house, mm -hmm. so make sure that when you have them out playing, make sure that you already, let's say, ferret proofed the house. They will. Oh, yeah. They'll get into the into the toilet paper. They'll get a tissue box. They'll love that. They'll just make a mess. Like you leave for 10 minutes and your house is completely changed. Oh, it's really funny. And it's uh, my friend had a ferret and he actually had him loose throughout the house the whole time. Mm -hmm. And he had a drawer. Like a bottom drawer that had a hole that was uh, 
I, that was just for him. Uh-huh. And when I went to go visit him, he's like, oh yeah, this is his drawer. And we open the drawer and there's an old hot dog, a pen, and a sock in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was really funny. All right. Well, I think we should turn to a more serious topic. And you brought it up to me uh, you know, through the DMs. And you said you wanted to talk about large corporations and puppies mills and stuff like that. And I'll let you kind of lead us into it since it is your area of uh, expertise. So the deal is with these big corporations is that they don't design a training program to help you and your dog improve your relationship. Their plan is to just have a, tra- a, a training program that increases sales. And it's very sad because a lot of clients, they graduate, they get a picture, they get a medal, uh, you know, the owners feel really good about it. And then two months later, they're calling me. Mm-hmm. And, and then I, I have to tell them that everything that they learned at those, you know, at those places is wrong. And you, we have to start over. We have to scratch everything, start from day one. And it's, it, it's been very sad because of the, uh, the way the program is designed. It doesn't, it, it, it makes the dogs actually bad. It does not improve leadership. It, it, it makes the dog become more hyper because they like to use treats. And treats is a amateur. That's amateur, you know. Mm-hmm. If you're a, if you're a true professional, you don't use treats. You just use praise. And so, and then you get, you know, and, it, and it's just sad, you know, because then you go there at the store, and then it says professional training treats. I'm like, oh please, come on, <laughs> just drop it, you know. It's and. And it's very funny because I'm actually I'm actually dealing right now with the hardest client I've ever dealt with. It's an 85 pound pit bull who is just absolutely unstoppable. He wants to kill everything, and wants to attack everything. Wow. And he had a prong collar, and every time you correct him with a prong collar, you actually it's actually designed to replicate the bite of the mother on the back of the neck. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and but every time that I would correct him, he would yelp but become stronger. Hmm. So, every, so every time I corrected him, he became bigger and bigger. So I've had to, re, so I've had to like rethink my whole my whole approach to dog training. You know, it has to be personal. It has to be something that you do with a professional inside of your home. If you just go to a store and then you have like a, a class with a you know with a lady that took a two week online course on dog training, you're not gonna get anywhere. That's crazy, though. All all that you said is really incredible. I, I mean, we've never went to a large store to get trained, or you know, we 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 just went to one to adopt our dog, and there was a place there, you know, with adoption stuff. Um, and they asked us if we wanted training, and we just said no. Yeah, I mean, it's it's personal. It's like saying, oh, training program for kids. It doesn't work. You know, everyone is an individual, and everyone is going to do things differently at different times. Would you say that every dog is different, or are there certain personalities that come out of most dogs? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I actually do have a very solid answer for that. So yes, every dog is an individual. Absolutely, just just like every other person, they all have their personalities, their traumas, their fears, their affinities, and um, uh, what was it? Oh yeah. Um, I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> I drew a blank. <laughs> so. Um... Uh, dogs, do they all have their own personalities or... Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so there are, in dog training school, they they have, uh, they teach us about the six different, the, the six major personalities. And every dog is a mixture between two. And it's, uh, it's hyperactive, uh, aggressive, shy, basket case, happy-go-lucky, and fear biter. Okay. All dogs will fall under those type of personalities. Hmm. And, and a mixture between the two. That's interesting. I I never knew that. I'm learning so much on the podcast today. So, yeah, man. Any question you have, ask away. I just have one more question for you today. You said that you didn't go through much training, or you didn't do a lot of training to work well, with dogs. Well, um, I did. I I did attend a very very good dog training school, the, and I took the uh, the professional course, which we learned everything from puppy like puppy development all the way to police attack work and drug detection and you know rescue and service dog um i uh, so eventually do you think you're going to get to the level where you can train a dog to like sniff out cocaine or something like that 
oh, that's that takes five minutes. Five minutes. It, oh, you're already at that level. It, well, you know, once you understand the process, uh-huh. all, you, all you have to do is set up the situation and make him do it with very little training. I mean, once you get the dog going, uh, I mean, we took when I went to school, there was 15 of us and everyone had to bring a dog and all the dogs were different. And by the end of six weeks, man, every dog was like a professional trained dog. And it was just absolutely amazing. Would it's you, very possible. Would you ever want to be the, you know, do the kind of work where you train a, like police dogs or something? Actually, that it, I, I'm not really interested in that. I am interested in uh, my, my expertise. I fall into working with bad dogs. Mm-hmm. I want, I want to work with a dog that nobody else wants to work with. Well, all right. Hey. If you want to check out Hellraiser, a.k.a. James, his links will be down below, like his YouTube channel and the link to his dog training profile. And I really do appreciate you coming to the podcast and talking about all things dogs and animals. Is there anything else you want to say before we end the podcast? No, I think that's it. Thank you very much, Yemi, for having me. It's been a pleasure. Well, all right. I am your host, Yemi the Ferret, and this has been another episode of the Ferret Business podcast.